The era of free money is over. Now money comes at a quarter of a percentage point. Alright, so not the most earth shattering revelation out there, especially since 2022 has set that bar so, so, so high, but it carries with it some interesting implications. Federal Reserve governors are each their own unique little snowflakes responding to economic situations differently. For example, you got Obama's overly cautious Fed Chair Janet Yellen, whose primary motivation was fighting inflation. First whiff she got of an economic recovery and who oh boy we're just gonna back off that stimulation track and get on to the fighting inflation track. Now her quick transition to cooling growth in order to fight inflation has widely been criticized and attributed to increasing the amount of time it took to recover from the 2008 financial collapse. Then you got a replacement, Trump and Biden's Jerome Powell who dealt with recovery in his own way. Partially taking lessons from the previous person's criticized abundance of caution, Jerome Powell took his own opposite approach to the crisis. You see, under his leadership, America has been playing a sort of game of economic chicken with inflation. We're going to see just how much growth we can squeeze out of this economy before swerving out of the way at the last second to dodge inflationary pressures. Now, unfortunately, neither us nor fundamental economic forces has blinked, so we ended up in an inflationary head on collision, which is where we're at today. Now, today we're trying to rise out of that inflation and get back on our feet again. As the most recent monetary policy tightening announcement, Jerome Powell has said that the Fed should obviously have began tightening rates earlier, before inflation got so high. So now we're in this really, really weird place where we're tightening the economy while at the same time watching the news feels a bit like a guided tour through the book of revelations. Huh, over there you can see pestilence, a ho can't forget to keep your eyes out for famine, and look at that war showing up right on time. Now this has been a huge hindsight criticism of Jerome Powell's approach to stimulation. Critics are concerned saying, I think the recessionary risk is very high. The Fed is caught in a box of its own making because it didn't move quickly enough on raising rates. Now it has to be seen to move aggressively. Basically, Yellen might have pulled out a bit too early, but at least she went out on her own terms. Today we got two fires burning different buildings and one bucket of water. We're just looking down at the bucket, looking at the two buildings burning, and trying to figure out which problem is worse and should be dealt with. Do we fight out of control inflation by slowing growth, or do we ignore the inflation and sustain growth until the world becomes a less insane place? Ah, <sighs> remember the good old days when we used to maybe just spend an entire month talking about a missing Malaysian airline flight? <sighs> good times. It's clear that Powell's strategy was, alright, we're gonna make it through the pandemic and then we're gonna start tightening things up as things start to return back to normal. One Russian invasion later though, and that hasn't aged too well. So what does any of this mean today? Well, monetary policy is a bit like driving on the highway without a working GPS. Alright, we all know where we're trying to go, and I'm pretty sure we haven't passed it yet. I'm just going to keep on this highway for a few more exits and see if the signs change language or just give some other indication that I've gone too far. You take an exit too early like Yellen did, and you just added a few more hours to your trip. There's a building, first sign of civilization. All right, we're getting off the highway. We're gonna navigate the back roads from this point onward to give us the rest of the route to the recovery. Now on the other hand, staying on past the destination, you're gonna have to make some costly backtracking. We all know that feeling when you miss your exit and you have to keep driving well knowing that the entire time, you're just getting further and further away from the goal. I really should have turned on my turn signal and gotten off back at the last exit. Guess I'm going to have to stay on this road until the next one presents itself and then make a complete 180 to get to the goal. Now with the Federal Reserve's policy, you can't just swerve and jump the shoulder at the first sign of trouble. 
do that and all of your passengers are going to start freaking out and causing a whole, whole bunch of unnecessary economic damage. Instead, you got to take it slow, get into the correct lane, and for God's sake, get off at the next possible exit. A few months ago, Jerome Powell clicked on that economic turn signal and said, yeah, we're going to take the next stimulation off ramp with an announcement coming out next rate setting meeting. So hold your breaths until then. Then Russia invaded Ukraine and the Federal Reserve had to do some really, really weird doublespeak. All right. All right. So we can't announce our announcement quite yet. But we can say that the invasion hasn't affected that announcement. We got our turn signal on and we're in the correct lane now. It's gonna take a lot more than trying to reestablish the Soviet Union to make us turn our focus back on encouraging growth and investment instead of fighting inflation. So this all leads us to the pinnacle the story has been building up to from this episode's beginning. The announcement itself. Now there was a pretty substantial argument behind the scenes, not about whether to tighten monetary policy or not, that ship had definitely sailed, but rather how much should we be tightening monetary policy by. Federal Reserve hawks were arguing that half a percentage point increase should really start putting inflation into its place. Now for those of you not in the know, half a percentage point might not sound like much, but in terms of Federal Reserve policy, that's the most extreme policy on the table. <gasps> wow, half a percent. Now the other group was advocating for half of that, a quarter of a percentage point increase. Ah, conservatives. For a while there, it seemed like we were going to get that half a percentage point bump in the rates, but with the world suddenly burning down all around us, the Federal Reserve went with the more conservative option. Now this cautious monetary policy tightening actually triggered a huge surge in the stock market because investors, well they were pricing in and bracing themselves for that larger, more radical rate hike. Now a final piece to this puzzle that doesn't get enough attention in the media these days are the actual numbers that Jerome Powell had in front of him when he was making these decisions. Super low unemployment. 3.5% to be precise, solid growth numbers, and banks that have enough in reserve to cover the collapse of any major systemically important organization, should one actually collapse. Jerome Powell looked at all this and he emphasized that, as far as the numbers go, the ones that you would be considering when pushing for growth over inflation fighting, well, they're all looking incredibly good right now. The pitch was basically, yeah, we should be transitioning to aggressively fighting inflation because everything else, on paper at least, is doing really, really well and inflation is a flashing red light on our dashboard. Of course, this could all end up being the embodiment of the this is fine meme. Now in the end, what we're looking at is the question of whether the economy can withstand rising rates during a period of geopolitical turmoil and a lingering pandemic. Now unfortunately, this is a question without an immediate answer. Simply put, if you were to live under a rock right now and you looked at these numbers and statistics, you'd be like, yeah, it makes a whole, whole lot of sense to transition away from growth and transition into fighting inflation. Glaringly obvious. Crack open a newspaper for half a second though and you start seeing a bit of a different story. Wow, there are a lot of things that could go wrong out there these days. Starting to tighten your monetary policy at a time like this is kind of like popping your airbags before you hit the road. Maybe, hopefully, everything's going to go fine. But if something goes wrong, its negative impact is going to be magnified. The stock market in the past few years has been able to shrug off some cataclysmic events. New variants? Yeah. Call me when the Federal Reserve cuts off our money. So this is the weird world that we find ourselves in today, where the Federal Reserve is being forced to prioritize anti-inflationary actions over pro-growth actions, leading to more uncertainty and bigger downside risks in the market. 
time will tell if this is a good move or not. And also, before we go, look out, because it looks like that radical half a percentage point bump might be coming down the pipe. Turn signal, well it's on. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Now, before I go-go into the outro, I have to apologize for being a bit slower than normal at putting out fresh content. You see, my boss just went on vacation for an entire month, and he left me taking charge of a lot of new tasks. Now, it will just be a month, and then I'll be back to normal. But the same day he left, our factories in China emailed us saying that they had locked down due to Omicron. And wow, he certainly dodged that bullet when he gave me that task. So um, basically, yeah, I'm trying to get everything done. I was working till like 11 at night for him and then writing this after that. So uh, I'm going to keep trying to put things out, but whew, it's a little bit rough. Thank you. And that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, non-partisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. And lastly, as always, thank you for watching.